Welcome. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at a practice that you likely already do, student conference. However, in this video, we are going to look at, take a closer look at intentional steps involved in a strong student conference in order to set yourself and your student up for success. We will start out by acknowledging that a student conference is a more involved response strategy for addressing behavior concerns. It typically is used when behavior is more frequent or intense. The type of student conference covered in this video is planned and purposeful. Teachers need to make the decision to hold the conference and then spend a little time preparing for the conference. Here are the intentional steps for an effective student conference. First, you're going to set up a time to meet with the student. This will allow both you and the student to have time dedicated to the conference and the focus of the conference. It likely should not be an impromptu meeting and should be set up at a time when both you and the student can have a private conversation. This allows both you and the student to be in a frame of mind that is focused on problem solving rather than immediately following a behavioral incident that has emotions running high for one or both of you. During this meeting with the student, the focus is on the behavior of concern. The dis discussion should define this behavior so both the student and the teacher understand what is being discussed. Within the student conference, time should be allocated for intentional teaching of school appropriate behavior, which will include practice opportunities for the student. There should not be an assumption of a performance deficit or won't do on the part of the student. Rather, the student conference is an approached as an opportunity to further scaffold and support instruction around social and academic skills in school. Before the conference ends, the teacher and the student will make a plan to ensure that the behavior of des um, desired is used in the future. This may include things like strategies to prompt the behavior, how the teacher will provide feedback to the student, and agreed upon goal for the student. A follow-up conference should be scheduled a few days after the initial conference to ensure the plan is working or to make changes as needed. Here is an abbreviated version of the language that could be used by a teacher in a student conference. CJ, thank you for meeting with me today before school. How's your day been going so far? I asked to meet with you today because I've noticed over the past few days that I've had to remind you about being on task. Instead of starting work on your assignments, I've observed you talking to your classmates getting up out of your seat, or drawing on the back side of the paper. Do you remember when this happened? When you are given an assignment, you need to. Let me show you what that looks like. I will be the student and you be the teacher who is giving me an assignment. When you do that, you can get done more quickly and move on to the things you enjoy more. Let's practice. How can I help you do that if you get stuck? Can we make a commitment to try this plan out? Let's meet again next week on Tuesday before school to check in on how things are going. Why does the student conference have a potential to improve outcomes for students? By having a conference with the student, you are making sure that the student is aware of the behavior that is concerning you. Sometimes the simple act of making the student aware of the behavior can have a positive impact on it. Another reason student conferences can be impactful is that the intentionality of teaching of the replacement behavior. It's a key part of the conference. We do not assume that students have all the necessary skills to demonstrate the school appropriate behavior, so the, these behaviors are explicitly taught, reviewed, and practiced. Finally, a part of the student conference involves you working with the student to develop a plan as a part of the conference. This helps with the buy-in from the student. Now let's do a quick review of what makes up an effective student conference. Schedule time to meet so the teacher and the student can focus on the conversation. Describe the behavior in observable terms. Checks for understanding. Practice opportunities. And a plan to follow up. Before we wrap up this video, let's do a quick rundown of things to avoid when planning and implementing student conferences. Do not schedule the time to meet when emotions are high for you or the student. Neither party is in the place for the student conference to be effective at that time. Student conferences should be as private as possible so that other students or staff are not hearing the conversation between you and the student. Your conference with the student should be a dialogue, not a monologue. 
encourage the student to participate in the conversation and in developing the plan. Student conferences, when done intentionally, can be an effective response strategy for supporting student behavior.